Hello, this is Dr. Oviedo. Today we are going to review numerous cases of cardiac valvular pathology. The first case is a normal mitral valve and is reviewed in a separate video. The second slide is a normal aortic valve and is also reviewed in a separate video. The third slide is a photograph of a normal right and left atria. The purpose of this slide is to learn the differences in the appearances of the right and left atria so that when you are looking at gross photographs of the heart, this will help you identify which side you are looking at. This is the right atrium and this is the left atrium. How do I know that? The right atrium has a trabeculated appearance throughout its atrial wall. You can see this here. While the left atrium has a smooth appearance, you can see it right here. The opening of the left atrial appendage is right here. Let's go on to our first case. Case one is calcific aortic valve stenosis. You can see this coronal CT scan shows the thorax and upper abdomen. This is the right lung, this is the left lung, this of course is the heart. This area right here is the left ventricle, this right here is the aorta. So of course in between them, this area right here is where the aortic valve would be. These white lesions here and here represent the calcification of the calcific aortic valve stenosis. This is a gross photograph of the aorta with the three leaflets. You can see this is the cut edge of the aorta right here. The three leaflets are here, here, and here. You can't see the coronary ostia in this particular photograph. However, you can see these very large yellowish white lesions here, 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 and here that represent the calcifications of the calcific aortic valve stenosis. In addition, the free edges of the leaflets, which are right here, right here, and right here, are normal. This is important to recognize because there are other valvular diseases which we will be reviewing later that do not have normal edges of the leaflets. However, calcific aortic valve stenosis does have normal leaflet edges. Let's go on to our next case. Case two is acute rheumatic fever. First, let's look at normal structures to orient ourselves. This area right here is of course the left atrium because it is quite smooth. You can see the orifice of the left atrial appendage right here. Next, this here and here is the cut wall of the left ventricle. So this space here, of course, would be the left ventricle. This area here, here, and here is the mitral valve. You can see the corti tendony right here and right here. And of course, there are papillary muscles here and here. Since we are on the left, this is, of course, the mitral valve. The pathology is the very small vegetations along the edge of the leaflet. You can see them here. I'm going to run my cursor across these small vegetations. So these small vegetations along the line of closure are very characteristic of acute rheumatic fever and result from the cross-reactive immune response against this area of the valve along with fibrin and platelet deposition. Let's go on to examine a section of the heart. This is a section of the right ventricle right here. We will not be examining these tissues on the right. At this power, you can see the endocardium would be right here. These irregular areas are just trabeculations. The myocardium would be right here. And the epicardium, of course, right here. Let's take a closer look. At this power, you can see there are numerous lymphocytes in the endocardium. This is a lymphocyte, this is a lymphocyte, and this is a lymphocyte. You can see there are quite a few. The endocardium, of course, is composed of endothelium right here and subendothelium right here. There are some empty spaces here and here. These empty spaces likely represent edema. You have lymphocytes and edema in the endocardium, so this is endocarditis. 
These are cross-reactive lymphocytes that were generated during the group A streptococcus pharyngitis episode. This area right here demonstrates numerous lymphocytes in the myocardium. There are lymphocytes here, and then there's quite a few over here. In addition, there are some empty spaces. These empty spaces likely represent edema. So you have lymphocytes and edema in the myocardium. This inflammation in the myocardium is triggered by antibodies against cardiac myosin. This is a histologic myocarditis. This here is the epicardium. Let's take a closer look. There's a blood vessel right here and another blood vessel right here. Most of the rest of this view is adipose. There are lymphocytes in this area right here, so this is an epicarditis. So we have endocarditis, myocarditis, and epicarditis. This is a pancarditis, which is very characteristic of acute rheumatic fever. The pancarditis in acute rheumatic fever is mediated by cross-reactive inflammatory processes generated as a result of the group A streptococcus pharyngitis. I want to take a closer look right here. This is a cluster of macrophages and T-cells. This is known as an Ashoff body, which is very characteristic of acute rheumatic fever. Some of the macrophages have elongated chromatin. For example, this one right here has elongated chromatin. The cells with the elongated chromatin are known as Anichtkau cells. These are also commonly seen in the Ashoff bodies of acute rheumatic fever. We have pancarditis with Ashoff bodies, which is, of course, acute rheumatic fever. Let's go on to our next case. Case 3 is chronic rheumatic heart disease of the mitral valve. First, let's orient ourselves. This up here is the left atrium. I can tell it's the left atrium because it is quite smooth. The opening of the left atrial appendage is right here. This here and here is the wall of the left ventricle. This here and here is the mitral valve. You can see the cordy tendony here and here, and of course, this is a papillary muscle and this is a papillary muscle. The pathology consists of these very thickened edge of the mitral valve leaflet, which you can see here, and you can see quite well right here. In addition, some of the cordy tendony are fibrosed and fused. You can see this right here. They, of course, should be very separate. This markedly abnormal thickened edge of the valve will affect the function of the valve and can cause stenosis and or regurgitation. This pathologic finding is the result of long-term remodeling of the mitral valve due to rheumatic fever. Let's go on to our next case. Case 4 is bacterial endocarditis. First, let's orient ourselves. This up here is the wall of the left atrium. I can tell because it's quite smooth. Here is the mitral valve. Here are the cordy tendony. You can see a little bit of the papillary muscles down here. The pathology, of course, is these very large vegetations on the mitral valve leaflets. There is a large vegetation right here and right here. These vegetations are friable. Friable is a word to mean that something falls apart when we touch it. So these large vegetations, of course, can fragment enter the systemic circulation and cause infarctions in systemic organs such as the brain where they can cause cerebral infarction. Let's go on to the histologic section of this case. This is a section of the mitral valve. This area up here is the left atrium. Down here is the left ventricle. I can tell it's a left ventricle because it's quite thick. The layers would be endocardium right here, myocardium from here to here, and epicardium over here. The mitral valve leaflet is right here. You can see there is a very large vegetation right here. We'll take a closer look in a minute, but you can also see down here there is destruction of myocardium. There is also an epicardial abscess right here. Let's take a closer look at the vegetation. At this power, you can see that this area down here represents the remnant of the normal valve leaflet. This area right here 
represents neutrophils. This pink area right here represents platelets and fibrin. This round structure right here is a bacterial colony. Let's take a closer look at the histology. At this power, you can see there are quite a few neutrophils and lymphocytes in this area. This pink area represents platelets and fibrin. The heavy pink material is fibrin. Sometimes if you look very closely, you can see platelets. But if you did special studies on this pink material, it would be composed of platelets and fibrin. This amorphous purple material here represents a bacterial colony. You can't really see individual bacteria in this type of preparation, but if you did special studies, you would see that these are, of course, bacteria. You can imagine that if this vegetation were to break off and embolize, it would impact in an artery of a systemic organ, and then you would have neutrophils, platelets, fibrin, and bacteria in that embolus, which would cause an infarction and, of course, an infection. In addition, you can see the structure of this vegetation makes treatment difficult. The vegetation doesn't really have its own blood supply, so it is more difficult to eradicate the bacteria with antibiotics. In addition, remember, there will be a lot of cytokines released in this type of inflammatory response and make the patient feel quite sick. The vegetation will, of course, also affect the function of the valve. Let's go on to our next case. Case 5 is nonbacterial thrombotic endocarditis. First, let's orient ourselves. This area up here is the left atrium. You can see that it's quite smooth. This right here and right here are the cut edges of the left ventricle. This right here and right here is, of course, the mitral valve. You can see the edge of the mitral valve has small vegetations. I'm going to run my cursor over the vegetations. This appearance of small vegetations at the line of closure is characteristic of nonbacterial thrombotic endocarditis. Let's go on to our next case. Case 6 is Libman Sachs endocarditis, which is a type of endocarditis associated with lupus. Let's take a look at our image. This area up here is the left atrium. You can see it is smooth. This area right here is the opening of the left atrial appendage. Here, of course, is the mitral valve. Here are the cordy tendony, and you can see a papillary muscle right here. These light pinkish orange areas here, here, and here are the vegetations. In addition, you can see that Libman Sachs endocarditis has vegetations on the cordy tendony. There's one right here and another one right here. These findings are very characteristic of Libman Sachs endocarditis. Let's go on to our summary. The first slide was a normal mitral valve. I put it here if you'd like to test yourself. You can stop the video and name all the structures. The next slide was also a normal aortic valve. Again, you can stop the video and name all the structures if you would like to test yourself. The next slide is a gross picture of the normal right and left atria. This is the right atrium, this is the left atrium. We can tell this is the right atrium because it has a trabeculated atrial wall. The wall of the left atrium is smooth. This up here is the opening of the left atrial appendage. Case one is calcific aortic valve stenosis. Here is our coronal CT scan. This is the aorta and this is the left ventricle. These white lesions right here represent the calcified aortic valve. Here is our gross picture. You can see there are extensive nodular calcifications on the valve leaflets. The edges of the leaflets are not primarily involved. Case 2 is acute rheumatic fever. The mitral valve demonstrates small vegetations along the line of closure. I've put a blue outline around the small vegetations. Here's our section with pancarditis. Here's the endocarditis with edema and lymphocytes in the endocardium. 
Here is the myocarditis with edema and lymphocytes in the myocardium. Here is the epicarditis with lymphocytes in the epicardium. Down here is the ash-off body, which is composed of macrophages and T-cells. Here is a very high power of the Enichkow cell. Even though it's kind of blurry, you can see the elongated chromatin in the middle of the nucleus. I put an outline around it. Remember, the myocarditis of acute rheumatic fever will generally resolve, but the valvular lesions can persist. Case 3 is chronic rheumatic heart disease of the mitral valve. Here is our picture that demonstrates the thickened line of closure and the fibrosed cordy tendony. I've put an outline along the most obvious thickened edge, and here are the fibrosed cordy tendony. The thickened edge of the valve will affect function and will eventually result in mitral valve stenosis and or mitral valve regurgitation. Case 4 is bacterial endocarditis. Here is our gross photograph of the mitral valve. You can see the very large vegetations on the leaflets right here. Here's our histologic section. Here's the vegetation on the valve. And here is a picture which demonstrates the neutrophils, the platelets and the fibrin, and here is the bacterial colony. The vegetation can of course embolize and cause numerous findings including systemic symptoms, Janeway lesions, Osler nodes, Roth spots, and infarctions in the brain and other organs. Case 5 is non-bacterial thrombotic endocarditis. Here is our photograph and here are the small vegetations on the line of closure of the mitral valve. Case 6 is Libman Sachs endocarditis. Here is our photograph. You can see the mitral valve has small vegetations on the leaflets and on the cordy tendony. Here are some of the vegetations on the leaflets. And here is one on the cordy tendony. Okay, that's it.